Hi everybody, it's Richard here again. Um, last video for this week. Um, I thought I would do something a little bit different. Although this has kind of been done before. Um, I want to do and show you what I think are my top three albums for each year. Starting probably from about 1964-65 up to around 1989, maybe 90. But rather than do it in order, <clears throat> I thought I would do um, three albums, what I think are the best three albums, and I'm going to pick five years. And I'm not starting in the 60s, I'll come back to that. I'll maybe, I'm starting in 1980. So for the first half of the 80s, I'll show what I think are the best, or my three favourite albums from 1980, 81, 82, 83 and 84 and um, then I'll probably, the next video will probably be 85 to 89 or I might even start 70 to 74, I don't know um, I'm not actually going to do it in chronological order, I don't know why, I just picked it that way so, okay, um, three albums, obviously there will be some artists that are repeated more than once, um, well, I'm sure you can guess by now which artist but there's a few surprises in the way here. So we'll start off in 1980 and what I think is probably, this is by the way very difficult because even when I was picking these albums out I saw one and I thought oh maybe I prefer that, I'm not too sure but I'm going to go with this anyway for the moment. The third best album for me for 1980 is this, this is XTC and Black Sea. This could be their best album it's in the top two anyway. This has um, got about four hit singles off of it. Uh, they were Generals and Majors, I think was the first one released. And then I think they released, was it um, Towers of London? Two minor hits. Sergeant, Pe uh, Sergeant Pepper, sorry, Sergeant Rock is going to help me. It was probably the biggest hit off this. It did get top 20. And then Respectable Street was a single, but this could have had so many other hits on it, to be quite honest with you. There's so many songs that could have been released as singles. Uh, Love at First Sight could very easily have been a single. Um, and I can't flip and well read this, half this stuff. There's the one, there's one which has got a very, very, how would I put it, dancey groove to it. Uh, as I say, I can't read the damn thing. I'm used to actually playing this on CD in the car. But no, this is a fantastic album. Really, really strong. In fact, no, I'm going to get it out. I'll just normally take records out. This is a bit of a, a cheap old version. Oh, I've got a lyric sheet I never realised I had, to be honest with you. The one I love is... Um, I love living through another Cuba, uh, rocket from a bottle and no language in our lungs. Side one on this is absolutely amazing. It's just a very, very strong album. Really strong. And I hope I have not. This is the thing about sticky sleeves. You need to be so careful. So that's number three for 1980. Number two for 1980. And many people may have thought this was my number one, but it's actually my number two. This is Bowie's Scary Monsters. Um, I got this about a week after it was released. Funny enough, and I remember how I got this, was I was supposed to go with my brother and my father to see Alex Higgins play snooker in uh, the local university. And I came down with the chicken pox and I couldn't go. And my father, kind man that he is, said, well, We'll buy you an album, what do you want? And I had just got into David Bowie and I said David Bowie's new album, so this is what I got. This is riddled with hits, four hits in the first side. It's no game, number one, I think should have been one of the singles. Teenage Wildlife, I've said before, is one of his best vocals ever. And he does a great version of Kingdom Come by uh, Tom Verlaine. This is, a lot of people rate this as his last truly fantastic album. I think he's had more, but... Right, this is number two. So the, the number one album for 1980 for me 
Maybe a bit of a surprise. This Kings of the Wild Frontier by Adam and Nance. This is pure genius. This is absolutely pure genius. Uh, three big hit singles. <coughs> Dog Eat Dog, Ant Music and Kings of the Wild Frontier. I always looked at Adam Ant as the Mark Bowen of the 80s and where Electric Warrior started off a sensation in the 70s for Mark Bowen. This started off a sensation, a teen sensation for Adam Ant. But before he went teeny, this is what this is what created it, and this is such an excellent album. It's full of Burundi drums, two drummers. Um, it's got that sort of almost Mexican feel to it, Clint Eastwood type Western movie. No, I love this. This is one of the best albums of the actually the nineteen eighties as a whole, or maybe even the best. Um, I can't not praise this uh, enough. Great album. So we go on to 1981, and the third best album from 1981, and it's very similar to Kings of the Wild Frontier, extremely similar, and that's Boy Why Wow's uh, See Jungle, See Jungle, Go Join Your Gang, Yes City All Over, Go Yep Crazy. This is the sleeve, I think was, I don't know if it was actually banned, because readily available, but it was frowned upon, and they did issue it on a different sleeve. Um, this has got the fantastic Go Wild in the Country. The guys behind the girl are the old ants of Adam and Ant. Ants, um, and this is more of the same of Kings of the Wild Frontier, to be quite honest with you, but more of a dance groove to it. Chihuahua's on this, which is a great song, and some songs that you don't really know as well. Uh, I'm a TV Savage is catchy as hell, and Jungle Boy is a great groove. Love this album as well. Bye, why, 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 see jungle, see jungle. Number two for 1981. Squeeze, East Side Story. Is it love, labelled with love, and tented? This is regarded as Squeeze's masterpiece. It's probably my second favourite album of theirs. My first is actually from 1980 and that was the one I was wondering whether it should get into the top three. But the only problem I have with this album is slightly too long. I would actually have cut two songs off this and I think it would have been a more satisfying listen. I would have cut the uh, experimental F hole and There's No Tomorrow. Then I think you would po possibly would have had their best album. But yeah, Squeeze, seen them live twice, second time was a few years ago, they weren't great, they, they played, I don't think they actually, um, the acoustics weren't good in the, the area, or the hall, uh, Solomon, which is weird because I've seen so many bands on that and they all sounded fantastic, I just don't think they were rigged up right, but anyway, Squeeze, number two, and the best album of 1981, are you ready for this? <laughs> it's the Visitors by ABBA. This is the final album. This is their masterpiece. Every ABBA album from Arrival onwards is of top-notch quality. But this is the one that I think just edges it in the end. This was the beginning of the end for them anyway because they didn't have a number one hit off this. The best single they got off this was um, One of Us. The second single, Head Over Heels, just scraped the top 30, and that was the writing on the wall, but this is a very personal album for them. It's a very downbeat, but there's a few upbeat tunes with downbeat lyrics, but the songwriting quality on this is just immense. It really is just immense, and I urge uh, people to listen to ABBA albums, not just ABBA Gold. You can have a party with your ABBA Gold. But an ABBA album is so satisfying. So that's my number one album of 1981. 1982, number three. The Dreaming by Kate Bush. This is my favourite Kate Bush album. This has got um, the fantastic Sat in Your Lap, her best single, apart from Wuthering Heights. Fantastic video as well. And you know it's 1982 in the video because she's... Uh, running around in roller skates in the video. 
the other singles off this didn't do so well. Um, the Dreaming, which is like a very Australian uh, outback based uh, Aboriginal type song, didn't do. It's a, it's a wonderful piece of music. It didn't do too well, and I don't. I can't understand. It's not the catchiest thing. There goes a tenor with her uh, mockney um, uh, uh, vocals, and there's a song on here I thought would have done extremely well as a single if it had ever been released, and that is Suspended in Gaffa. I think it's wonderful. It is experimental, but it is, it is more accessible than you think. I think it's more accessible than side two of the big hit, um, Hounds of Love. This is my number three album for 1982. My number two album for 1982 is Paul McCartney's Tug of War. I love this. I love Pipes to Pieces as well actually, even though it gets slated. I think the production in this is perfect. It was remixed a couple of years ago and I have no idea why because it's perfect. The song Tug of War and Wanderlust are his best ever. They're, they're, I would even say they're comparable in quality with his Beatles material. Take It Away is a great catchy song. Get It is fun. The Pound is Sinking is one of those where he's able to merge two songs together to make one excellent. Ebony and Ivory is a bit sappy but I'll defend it. And the sappiest of the lot, and I really don't particularly like it, is Here Today, which is the tribute to John Lennon. I just find tributes a little bit uh, overbearing, to be quite honest with you. Uh, there, there's one in particular, and it's actually from 1982, that I do love, and that was Elton John's uh, Empty Garden, Hey Hey Johnny. I thought it was the best tribute to him by anyone. So, what is my number one album from 1982? Second appearance for this band, XTC's English Settlement. Senses Working Overtime, what a single. Ball and Chain, what a single. Uh, what else have we got here? No Thugs in Our House. Uh, the one I really like is Snowman. Um, all of a sudden it's too late. Yacht Dance, this is... This takes a bit of getting used to. It's a double album. It's not that easy in the years to start with, but this does reward. And this was one that I lived with in the car, going to back and forth from work. And it's just, it's excellent. This is probably their best ever album, Daughter Black Sea. So this is the number one album of 1982. 1983. And the third best album of 83, Big Country, The Crossing. I'm trying to not get so much glare. Fields of Fire, In a Big Country, Chance. Uh, Inwards, fantastic song. Harvest Home, the very first single, which didn't do anything, fantastic. Big Country never uh, bettered this. I didn't include it in my... Um, Never bettered their debuts album because Stuart Adamson, the writer, really wrote the Skids songs as well. So it's not uh, the fourth Skids album, or you know, in any sense. But this is fantastic, and the band themselves never really came close. To this album, brilliant. Number two of 1983. He misses the top spot again, David Bowie, Let's Dance. Side one, perfect pop. Side two, almost perfect pop. Eight songs on it, only one slight song not too keen on, and that's his rework of Cat People. It's got Modern Love, Let's Dance, China Girl, um, Shake It, I always said should have been a single. Without You could also have been a single. Um, Ricochet is the only song that would be a little bit similar to something off Lodger, but it's excellent as well. So that's the number two album of uh, Nile Rogers produced, and you know it's like a chic album, the sound of it. Which leads into number one, and quite ironically, this was part produced 
by the producer Bowie Left Behind at the time. This is the best album, 1983 for me. Half produced by Mike Chapman, half produced by Tony Visconti. Uh, there's four singles taken off this. There's only eight songs on the album. This is Altered Images, Bite. This is their mature album. And this is just smooth, beautiful, slightly dance orientated, but it's, it's pop, it's pop music. Don't talk to me about love's beautiful. Bring me closer, it's great. Um, another lost look is one of my personal favourites, as is uh, Now That You're Here. The other two singles were Love To Stay and Change Of Heart. There's not a bad song on this, and this deservedly gets the best album for me for 1983. So, we're 15 and a half minutes in, and the last year of this video is 1984. And I've shown this album before, this is the third best album of 84. This is the Bangles debut. This is their old to the 60s really. Good, jangly guitar, very birds influenced, very Beatles influenced and, and strong songs. Um, this was their least successful but obviously it was their first album, they weren't well known. Their next album became massive but this is the third best album of 84. Second best album of 84, Queen, The Works. Um, I'm not going to say this is a return to form after Hot Space, and there's a reason for that. But this is a fantastic album. This has got four singles, one from each member. Roger Taylor wrote Radio Gaga. Brian May wrote Hammer to Fall, Freddie Mercury wrote It's a Hard Life, and John Deacon wrote uh, I Want to Break Free. They were all top uh, 20 hits, three of them top 10. But it's not just the singles on here. Tear It Up by Brian May is one of his best ever rockers. Uh, Keep Passing Through Open Windows is a personal favourite. Uh, you get the almost the Jerry Lee Lewis type rock and roll number rather than the Elvis one of Man on the Pride, which is great. And the only one I'm not overly keen on is Is This the World We Created, where again it gets a little bit. I like the sentiment, but the, I, I, how do I put this? I like the sentiment behind something, but I like it, the, the words to be subtle. You know, I like subtlety in the words, but I thought it's just a little bit in your face. But anyway, that's the number two. And the best album of 1984, and this is, should be no, no surprise at all. <clears throat> this is a Smith's, the first album. I couldn't wait till this came out. I had the two singles. I hadn't the uh, hand and glove as yet. I just could not wait for this to come out and I was not disappointed. Uh, Reel Around the Fountain is about six minutes long and it's fantastic. Still ill. Should have been a single. Um, the Hand That Rocks the Cradle. You've got everything now. Um, I, don't know you, I don't owe you anything. Suffer Little Children. Uh, they're all classic Smiths. Birds inspired pop and it was new. I know they're inspired by the birds, but Morrissey's voice was new. It was different and I always thought that these guys saved the eighties. This is their second best album and I love it. And it's the best album of nineteen eighty four. So that's the first uh, four, five years of the eighties covered for the top three. Um Next one will be next week before I do another video, I'm sure, and I may do the second half of the 80s. I may actually do the second half of the 70s. I don't know. We shall see. Anyway, all the best. Bye-bye.